Hi everyone, I am Alex and welcome back to our channel. We explore and study the Chernobyl exclusion zone for more than a decade and spent multiple years on site. So what we're gonna do today is to start one more series, the Chernobyl Uncharted. As insiders here, you know, we do not want to make just some kind of wow videos, but what we really want is to let you see this unique area as we see it, with all its secrets. Even more, if you watch at our Computers of Chernobyl series, this one will give you an additional context for our future episodes, such as those upcoming about the unique computers of Duga Raider. So, like this video, subscribe, check our Patreon page and let's go! In our today's episode, we will walk together inside the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and we will try to explain what is that place. We start with this, because this facility defined the zone. We shot this before the war, and like that it won't be anymore, so this makes it even more valuable. What people imagine about Chernobyl nuclear power plant often is very different from things that are happening inside, which are far more interesting. Because what is happening inside this facility for nearly four decades goes far beyond a human life scale. Because when you deal with Chernobyl, you in reality deal with eternity. Many tasks that are being solved here will take decades and will be continued already by someone else. In other words, long time after, all of us will pass away. The staff of the power plant often calls it the factory. When back in 2009 I saw it for the first time, I honestly could not put in my mind that this tectonic-like place has been created only to produce energy. In reality, it turned into a factory that produces history. Uh, did you ever see something that gave you a similar feeling? Tell us in the comments. It is hard to comprehend the size of the power plant site, because it is actually bigger than an entire city of Pripyat. Nowadays, the 2000 of staff of the power plant continue to transform the former energy facility to a safer place. And all of this defined by often unseen presence of the sarcophagus, or how it is officially called, the object shelter. It is now covered with the new safe confinement, which construction we witnessed from the very beginning, so that is the thing for future episodes as well. The shelter has been built in one single attempt by placing enormously big elements straight over the damaged structures. This required a lot of modeling and complex calculations, and even more, a true heroism of its builders. Nowadays, the shelter is a place with very diverse conditions. Internals of the shelter are only partly explored by people in person. Contrary to popular beliefs, for some experts going inside it is a pretty regular job. The radiation is not a magical substance and there are ways of protection and ways of the dose management. The roots are planted up to the second, a protective clothes is being used against the hard mission and they do their job. However, in some places it's not possible to pass, as uh, that places are obstructed by debris or post-disaster so-called fresh concrete. So to such places there are dozens of drills made with detectors installed. All of this controlled 24-7 by the shelter control system and a lot of computers. And we're gonna have many episodes about them. More than a half kilometer away from the shelter, on another side of the giant turbine hall, there is a building of administrative household complex, or ABK-1, and here it's totally different. It is normal life as much as it can be. A few years ago we created this handmade interactive model of the power plant site, and now it is at ABK-1, and here it is possible to see how big is the factory of history. If you would like to have a video about this model, how it was created, let us know in the comments, please. But back in 1986, at the hottest post-disaster days, here everything was different. The windows of Abeka 1 were crudely lined with lead and sandbags, and here, under it, at the Fallout Shelter 1, the key decisions have been made. Since then, this place passed a massive decontamination, this shiny polymer floor confined it what was not possible to clean up, along with the original tiled floor. There are special monitoring systems here that watch the gamma radiation and such as this, the radioactive aerosols, if any would appear in the case of emergency. 
well, at some point in one room appeared this brilliant exhibition of the historical dosimetry equipment. By the way, many of these kind of devices we have, so in the future wait for episodes about these dosimeters in action. Don't forget to subscribe. However, no one that time knew that emergency will actually happen, but a different one. When the Russians invaded and occupied the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, they turned this shelter into a holding cell, and the standard 8-hour shift of the staff turned it into a long and hard 36 days. Behind the ABK-1 complex starts the main compound, stroked through for more than 600 meters with this G-301 corridor, known as a Golden Corridor. This nickname has been given because of the anodized aluminum panels. They were installed after the massive cleanup and repair, and now there is no elevated radiation here until you reach its modern end, where it comes to the shelter. Our destination is the control room 4, which technically is inside the sarcophagus. However, before we get there, we will pass a few more important places which are connected to this corridor. It is very, very cold here, and it's very, very complex here. Every door has a sign with a long acronyms, everything has its own purpose. And if you even start to work at the power plant, you need to learn its geography for a few months. Sometimes in this corridor it's even possible to spot such small loudspeakers with a tiny inscription, a lookup system of the power plant. Well, pretty useful if you need to find someone in this labyrinth, right? The nuclear reactor is an exceptionally complex device to control. It involves a lot of parameters and processes, and to analyze and register all of that, each unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant had a specialized computer system, SCALA. You know, back in my childhood I was reading books with the memories about that events, and there were such sentences said kind of uh, Scala computer gave this information, or on the printout of Scala was this. And uh, there were no information how does this thing look like, and uh, I never could imagine that I will actually see it one day. That time we came here when Scala was scheduled for dismantling, as it no longer used it. Well, we will not hide this, that moment we told them that this is not a good idea, because this is a precious historical heritage. And thanks to the power plant, they followed this advice and preserved it. So this actually inspired us for the computers of Chernobyl series you can find on our channel, and in the future here will be separate episodes about Scala as well. But we move forward, and through the window it's possible to see Abika 2. It's uh, the second administrative complex. And note its windows, because after the disaster they will change it to the thick glass blocks. And it is very, very close to the place where back in 1986 happened the famous cable episode. We told about it in our previous videos. And uh, the story behind is that the vice president of the Soviet Academy of Sciences, Evgeny Velikov, broke the glass to take the detection cable. But you know, in reality it's hard to comprehend how much more happened here virtually on every step. What you see in the window now is the Unit 3, practically a copy of exploded force standing mirrored to it. And after a hundred meters of walking we come to Beshu 3, the control room of the Unit 3. Rooms of the Unit 1 and Unit 2 were made earlier, so they look a little bit different, and this one is exactly the same like the one of the Unit 4. There are four workplaces here for the chief reactor control engineer, the circulation pumps control engineer, and the turbines control engineer. The fourth one is NSB, the chief of the unit's shift. He has to be skilled enough to replace any of three his colleagues at any time. Because the process of work here must be uninterrupted. And you need to study for years to work with this equipment. Of course, all of this is very obsolete. Other Ukrainian nuclear power plants are stuffed with computers, and you won't see so many old school dials and so, but this allows to imagine how complex was this work. Here is the famous AZ-5 button, the same that was used in an attempt to stop 
the infamous Unit 4, which eventually triggered the explosion. The Unit 3 uh, continued operation up to 2000 and in fact could work up to 2015, so there was a very serious modernization and this AZ-5 was not only replaced to a rotary switch waiter, but a new faster emergency system has been introduced, which is called BUZZ. From the various systems that were controlled from this room once, a turbine system is a part which is no longer existing. Back in 2010, I have been given an opportunity to see it before the dismantling started, and these pictures is only what I have, I didn't record videos at that time. There were 8 turbine generators in total, each installation was more than a thousand ton heavy and more than 30 meters long. Needless to say that the turbine generators of the Unit 4 are still at their place, because that part of the turbine hole has been cut with the wall to confine it inside the shelter. As farther you go towards the reactor core, as more the structure looks like a labyrinth. Some doors here are of a few tons heavy, because they protect from something that a human better would not touch. What looks like a deep basement is actually well above the ground, and we are heading to the place which used to be a symmetry point between units 3 and 4. To the right there is a hole of the circulation pumps of the unit 3, and to the left used to be the same but for the unit 4. That place became a final rest place for Valery Hodemchuk, unit 4 pumps engineer, who perished in explosion and he was never found. Once the entrance to the Unit 4 pumps became a wall with his gravestone. And later, as a part of the new safe confinement construction, this place was rebuilt and the sign was slightly moved. With this reconstruction disappeared one tiny but essential detail that actually not so many notice it. On one side you had a lot of corridors, various pipes, connections, a lot, a lot of things. And on another side was just a, you know, such a shadow imprint of the the same corridor that was on that side, like shadow imprint on a, in the concrete. And they were the same pipes, but cut and sealed. Frankly speaking, understanding that the same big was on that side, that you can see on this side, uh, was really eerie. And here we come to the main circulation pumps or GCNs. It was very dark at the time to film, but it was possible to feel how big that hole is. So there are four pumps at the east and the west from the reactor. They are incredibly huge and incredibly powerful. And by the technological reasons, radiation level in this hole is pretty elevated. A few more minutes of walking through the labyrinths to get even upper to the reactor central hole. And what you see now is just a top level of a gigantic reactor structure. The metal covers for servo motors and hermetic channel tips. Below is a super complex combination of so called schematics and thousands of pipes perfectly shaped in a complex order to build up the active zone. Above is a loading unloading machine powered by enormously big gantry crane. The machine has a special revolving mechanism that allowed to change the fuel rods. Because they burn uneven from the center to periphery, so it was possible to swap them to use the fuel more efficient, as well to take out spent or put in the new rods. This multi-ton heavy machine of the Unit 4, after the explosion, ended up thrown to the other side of what remained from the former central hole. The insane size of all of this required assembly of the RBM car reactors straight at the place. We should not forget this is a very old type of reactor, modern reactors are much more small. So that time it was impossible to build any protective vessel over such big reactor. And pre-disaster calculations and beliefs, however, told that this can't explode, as we know reality was slightly different. 
but even sharper it becomes when you come to the control room of the Unit 4. The golden corridor here is no longer golden, and after a few more turns we go in. You know, when I for the first time came here, I had a very sharp feeling that all my knowledge and experience in the zone became irrelevant. Because this is one thing to know what happened here. And a totally another thing is when you get a sudden feeling that you can imagine yourself standing here back in that silent night. Tell me, did you ever had something like that? Tell us in the comments. The most of devices here were repurposed to be used on other units. And the room itself became shorter, so a part of the control panel was eventually removed. And itself, levels here nowadays are lower than even in a pump's hole. But a good reminder that this place is inside a shelter are uh, that inscriptions with radiation levels, now they are overpainted, and that time they were quickly sprayed in hurry, straight over the metal. You know, while walking back, I remember at one conversation with one of the senior engineers of the nuclear power plant, who works there already for kind of three decades. You can't even imagine, he said, the factory, when it was alive, it was really like a city, with a rumble of reactors, giant reloading machines moving, thousands, thousands of people working. You know, I have been here so many times and uh, I still can't comprehend it. It's really not a factory of energy. It's a factory of history. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. There will be a lot more interesting. For those who want to get even more, you are welcome to join us on Patreon. Link is in the description below. More patrons, more interesting content for you. So, thank you for watching and see you next time.